Hey guys, Dima here. We're going to try to get straight to the point today. As you guys know, the uh, PTR dropped today with all the new changes to the carnival build and all the different set and items and how things function. Uh, today is 8, oh, well, it was 8-6-2015. Uh, that's when they dropped it. We're going to be showcasing the carnival build today. Uh, no one need to fear. Carnival build is fine. Not so much about the changes. Uh, if the build would have went through with the cha with without the changes that they did overall to pets, then I think Carnival would have been a lot off worse. But they did some pretty serious tweaking to the pets uh, with the new patch. Let's just go to it straight and just get right into it. Area of effect, and I'm not. Uh, this is true. Area of effect. I know you're about to go crazy. Area of effect can now be triggered by pets. That's the one huge thing they did. All your fetishes, including fetish sycophants, can get increased damage from fetish army skill. Let me repeat. Even the fetishes from fetish sycophants are affected by the fetish army increased skill damage. Area of effect. Fetish army damage applies to everything. Pets can trigger area of effect. Uh, fetish increased damage can affect all pets. So I just want to let you guys know those two things very first. Again, I'm sorry to reiterate this because I just want to make sure this is clear. Area damage can now be triggered by pets. Fetish army damage increases all fetish damage. I know. Crazy, right? So let's just go ahead and get into it. The biggest changes that you have to realize with Carnival is, is that they're reducing your uh, 23 fetishes down to 5 of the closest fetishes next to you that will shoot the darts. Debo, is that a really big change? Is it horrendous? No, not really. As long as you understand now, we're going to have to be gearing a little bit differently and changing how things do, we should be perfectly be fine. Now, there's one thing I have to double check on. Somebody also mentioned that basically in the pet equation, for every 10% of attack speed you get, the pets get 10% increased damage. Now, I'm going to have to go back and double check that, but attack speed is attack speed's pretty still important for this build. But the big thing is, is having a good critical percent chance, good critical damage, making sure we incorporate area damage into our build now, and also making sure uh, that we also got our increased fetish army damage. What used to be before of Carnival build is we used to use fetish, uh, I'm sorry, the poison dart damage on the offhand because we'd had 23 fetishes shooting darts, but you're no longer going to do that. What you're going to want on the offhand is uh, basically to have area of effect damage and the fetish army damage. That's basically the best combo. You're still going to take increased poison dart damage on certain pieces of gear that you normally can as long as it doesn't affect fetish army damage. And also, uh, between your gyms, I would recommend the Esoteric. I've seen a lot of people run that, and I've actually been running that for damage mitigation. But outside of all of that, the last two gyms are kind of your choice. If you were to run Enforcer Gym, Enforcer Gym affects all pets, including the ones shooting the darts and ones not. Uh, so, whereas Simplicity Gym only applies to the ones that are shooting the darts. So, depending on what you want to do, I did this version running Simplicity and the uh, Bane of the Trap. I've seen some people run Enforcer, Esoteric and Gugaka Swiftness. I've seen so many different combinations. The big thing that's going to determine how successful you are with this build is just basically having solid gear pieces, making sure most of them are ancient. If you have an ancient weapon, that would definitely put you to the next level. Uh, I didn't have a Hellfire Amulet, but if I had that, I definitely would want Gruesome Feast so I can, you know, get the extra additional damage buffs and stuff. All that stuff makes a big difference, so you might want to start looking into that if you're going to mold your Witch Doctor for non-seasons or Season 4. Alright, so we explained that area damage now affects pets, and we explained that fetish army damage now affects all fetishes, including the passive. We now know that Carnival could only shoot five, or have the closest fetishes shoot five darts at a time, or five fetishes shooting darts at the time, that you only have a max of five. Um, so the other fetishes are just going to malee. So out of your 23 fetishes, or how many other fetishes you end up having, depending on what fetish army skill you have, five will be shooting darts at one time, the rest will be basically... Uh, Maleeing, and like I said, fetish army damage improves everything. So let's just go ahead and get into what I chose. Um, I'm running Masker Drum. I have the Carnival uh, actually cube. The reason why I'm running this is because this Masker Drum, as you see, is ancient, good ink, good vitality, critical percent chance. You can get cooldown reduction or vitality. Uh, or, I mean, the life percent, I prefer life percent because I want more HP. I got the two-piece Ogdos Power, and preferably I like to run the Powerdons of the Skeleton King, which you can get from Act 1, and pair that with the Bracers of Steady Strikers with Attack Speed. And unfortunately, in this situation, I don't have that, and I want to make sure I'm having my good solid survivability. So a good alternate thing, if you can got them, I would say uh, use them Ogdos Power on the Bracers and the Shoulders. As you can see, they're both... Uh, uh, 
uh, Ancient on the shoulder. I have in vitality. I have fetish army damage and what I used to have army that armor extra armor cooldown reduction I swapped it out for chance to deal area damage since pets are affected by them Your chest is still gonna be typically the same in vitality and actually fetish army damage and your bracer is gonna be traditional poison in vitality critical percent chance of course in the future You want some steady strikers or lacunies that have poison and critical chance and attack speed, but I don't have that yet I'm rocking the simple straight black thorns necklace. It has a poison damage, critical percent chance, critical damage, and a socket. And I'm also running a trifecta, of course, on the Zuni Master Finger Wraps. I mean, that's no surprise there. Uh, if you can definitely get a solid uh, Witching Hour belt that has poison dart damage, you definitely want to do that instead of Vitality. Unfortunately, I couldn't get in this situation, so I just had the best stats I could. I had Int, I had Vitality, Attack Speed, and a good critical damage, so I just use it that way. But I highly recommend using the... Uh, Oh, excuse me, how do you say the uh, poison dart damage if you can get in there? I haven't found one yet, but I'm bear, bear with me. I'm trying to find one to make a better run. Uh, for the rings, I'm using focus and restraint. Both have and critical percent chance, critical damage, and socket. If I can find them in the future, I preferably would like to have attack speed, critical percent chance, critical damage, and socket. But I don't know how hard that is to get or if that's even possible. But for right now, uh, critical percent chance, critical damage, socket, and ant will do fine on both rings. Uh, pants are the same in vitality. You're still gonna have poison dart damage, and these shoes are in vitality armor and all resistance, so you can get as much survivability and toughness as possible. This might be a little tricky, but I got lucky on the PTR and found this in vitality. Critical percent chance, great area damage and fetish army damage. You always want to take that fetish army damage now, since they made the big changes to the build. And we're wanting a dagger of darts. You want to make sure you have a damage percent on it, along with your attacks, because that's also very important. In this situation, I'm using basically level 50 gems, 53, uh, this one is 52, that one is 52. So basically it's around level 50 when I actually beat it. Well, I might be in like a 51, 52. Um, so we got the esoteric to reduce damage to help us survive. This helps out a lot when we get hit by range stuff because we're usually far back and not too many physical stuff gets close to hit us in the first place. And if we get below the life, we get an increase up to 75%, which helps out a lot. We also have the Bane of the Trapped. Uh, basically anything monsters. Well, you guys know how Bane the Trap works. I don't need to explain it, but between the Snake to the Face, the Grasp of the Dead, and the Prawns of Paranata, we have many things to trigger it, and it's going to increase our damage, and that's fantastic. And also Simplicity Gym uh, increases the damage of our primary skill, which is Poison Darts, and heals us back with a little bit of life on hit. That's all you really need to basically use. If you want to switch out the gym, that's totally up to you. Use the highest level gyms you possibly can, but as long as you have a pretty solid set with good rolls on everything, you should be okay. As you can see, my Paragon level is only 782. It's not really insanely high. If you have higher Paragon levels, it's going to help. Also, Hellfire Amulet, if you have that, along with a uh, Gruesome Feast, that will help out phenomenally, especially if you have Paragon levels one, over like 1,000 or higher, because you'll have so much intelligence that when you pick up those orbs, it will scale up really highly and dramatically increase your experience. So, that's what's going on with the build. As you can see, we got 59% critical chance, 512% critical damage, 77 uh, uh area damage. All attacks have a 20% chance to deal 77% of the damage to enemies within 10 yards, which is really integral. Like, that's really powerful. Uh, we got 35% poison damage increase, and then we got the increase from the Simplicity Gym, and as you can see, everything else is working out pretty well. 2 million base damage, uh, 21 million toughness. We'll go ahead and talk about the skills real quick. Poison Dart Snake to the face, no duh here. Whatever you mana spinner, if you don't like Grasp of the Dead, you can use Acid Cloud. Whatever you prefer, but I prefer Grasp of the Dead because when it, it hits all the enemies in a circle, it chills, and then anything that gets hit on the whole screen with uh, the Reign of Corpses, it triggers a six piece set of the Zuni, and I like that. So that's why I use it. Spirit Vessel, oh, I'm sorry, Spirit Walk with Jaunt, uh, Fetish Army with Headhunters. I was running actually the build you're about to see in the Greater 60 with Legion of Daggers. I'd recommend the Headhunters, or I mean Legion of Daggers, both are fine, but I think you'd probably benefit a lot more running poison damage with headhunters. Uh, piranhas with para uh, sorry, piranhas with not zombie piranhas, but actually with Paranato. Stack everything up. Uh, big Bad Voodoo with Slam Dance, and then we're of course running Pierce the Veil, Grave Injustice to reduce the cooldown of our skills. Fetish Sick Offense to trigger the fetishes, and Spirit Vessel for a little bit of survivability. If you notice, they increase the healing amount you get when you go into Spirit Vessel to 50%, and the effect can occur every 60 seconds. That's down from 90 seconds, so that definitely helps out a lot. <coughs> So as you can see, we're all the different uh, items that we're running. You see how we got the gear set up. Let's just go ahead and I'll tap over and take a look at the video here. We're going to go ahead and hit play, and we'll go ahead and mute the sound. I'm just going to go ahead and talk to you. Uh, we might speed up in certain segments, but basically uh, up until the point with my gear set, 59 was fairly easy. 60 was a little bit of a push. It took me about five to six runs to get this attempt where it was pretty decent. So at a low Paragon level, 
okay gear, not the most optimal, and a non ancient as uh, non ancient um, dagger of darts. Uh, Carnival does really well as long as you cube the right items and you do what you need to do. And actually, I think I forgot to show you guys the cube items. Let me actually pause real quick, switch back over, and show you my cube options. Now, since I'm running Mask of Jerome, I got the uh, Carnival cubed. I also have the SNK cube and the Ring of Royal Grandeur. My bad. I want to make sure I get you guys that information. As you can see, everything starts off pretty normal here. Um, the only thing I'm doing is that I realize that I have a bunch of mobs in this room, and I might take a death here, but I was looking at the mob density, and I said, you know, I don't think the mobs are too bad, so I'll be able to, you know, res up and do okay. And as you can see, I'm going to go ahead and just, I pop up my uh, fetishes, and then I got my big bad voodoo. Big bad voodoo is very important now because the attack speed increase, the, the damage that calculates for pets is very important. So you want to make sure you stay in that. And then, of course, Prawns of Parent not on using Grasp of the Dead. What's the trigger using any mobs? So try to use them offsetting one another, Grasp of Dead, and then wait a little bit, then into a Prawns of Parent not on, then into the Grasp of Dead. Um, I might end up thinking about changing the uh, Grave Injustice a little bit later because I'm not too close to enemy sometimes, and it's kind of dangerous to be. But for now, it worked out pretty okay and gave me enough cooldown reduction so I can keep Prawns of Parent not up at a healthy amount. As you can see, the damage is pretty solid. The five fetishes do pretty right on damage in terms of billions and uh, the other monsters you know they just do the regular attacks and they crit and that ends up actually working out pretty well and as you can see it even at level 60 and I don't even have the most optimized gear the damage actually ends up being good uh, what really pulls this build through is the area of effect damage affecting pets that's humongous and then also with the fetish army that damage att affecting everything that ended up pushing up the damage very way higher so Basically, I kind of understand why they didn't put in the 380% as promised and they only gave us 250% increased damage on those fetishes, five fetishes that can shoot darts because with the fetish army and the area of effect damage, you really don't need more. If they were to boost that any more, I probably would be able to push up to 62 or 63 with the subpar gear. That means somebody with really high gear might be able to push all the way up to, I'm thinking, I'd like to say around 65 well, I'm sorry. With the bad gear, if I actually, you know, honestly, if I had the that 300% I'm probably going to push up maybe 62, 63, 64, maybe in 65, but somebody with pretty decent gear, I'm talking like blowing past 70, so I don't know if we necessarily need that, because I mean, Carnival starts pushing towards 73, 75, that'd be kind of nuts. Well, I, maybe that's too much to say. I know one guy got 67. With the changes, he probably, with the changes to Carnival, if he re-geared right, he probably can push to 70. And I, I really do think if they gave us the full amount of damage, he could push even higher. But I digress. As you can see, I was able to actually take care of that room pretty much. And there's really not much to the build. It's still the same as a regular Carnival. You only have to worry about the five fetishes. And the uh, once you start shooting, and the other fetishes just kind of go into battle. So dropping my grass to dead, keep my big bad voodoo up, and using my prawns of Paranato. And I'm always trying to keep grass with dead up because that triggers the second part of my um, focus and restraint combo. Whereas my darts trigger the other part because I want to keep that uh, <coughs> increased damage. So as you see, I'm basically chilling way far back with the esoteric. Uh, it really helps out a lot because it will mitigate any damage that you get hit from from range, which could be any elements like thunder or molten or anything like that. We got that gym up to 50, so that helps out with survivability. Um, we also, like I said, the Simplicity Gym is doing wonderfully in terms of this damage and also being the trap because we can trigger that from far away. And as you can see, the billions of damage, everything's dying pretty quick. And this is actually pretty amazing considering like, I don't have that much optimized gear and low paragon. But like I said, area damage on this build is ridiculous in combination with the Fetish Army increases damage for not only the ones from the passive, but also the ones from the uh, actual uh, skill as well. So... I'm going to speed up just a little bit, and I know it's loading here. There's really not much to it. I got a really lucky rift. It was a lot of straightforward, high mob density. Let me see if I can uh, reduce it down from source, maybe to high. Maybe that'll help with the encoding a little bit. Um, this just recently uh, got uploaded to Twitch, and uh, I just wanted to showcase this, so please bear with me. But as you can see, there's really not much else to the rift. There's really not much to else to say. I get high mob density, I get really easy monsters, it took me about 5 to 6 attempts on level 60 to get this, 59, if I ran 10 attempts at 59, for some reason I can knock out probably nine out of, 7 out of 10 of them, 
for some reason. For some reason, 60 is a little bit higher of a kick where I need a little bit of fishing to help out. So nothing too serious here. See those orbs? If I would have had actually a health fire with a gruesome feast, that probably would have helped out a lot more and things would have been a lot better. But as you can see, the damage is pretty consistent. All the monsters are melting. The damage is great. And also the air effect goes off really well and does really great damage and just melts the mob. So basically, I'm just proceeding through the uh, rift, you know, just killing the monsters as they come. Uh, there's really much not too much else to it. We're just gonna keep speeding forward. I went up the stairs after that point I was actually able to land some pretty solid damage and and get what I needed done So as you can see carnival build is fine Long as you take your area damage and you get your fetish army damage you get good rolls in your gear You will be fine. You can easily push 60 now if you push it to the limit and you get perfect rolls and best and slot everything I mean the sky is the limit depending on what you fish um, but I have to say, I have to commend Mr. Yang on this whole changes to the carnival ability. He did a very good job. I never thought in a million years they would ever make area damage it actually works for pets, because I remember I was talking about that a long time ago, how that would actually help out the melee pet build and be very good overall for the pet build, but it might be a little bit too crazy. So at least for Witch Doctor, most people who I think any pet, they benefits from the area effect damage, so it's a fantastic stat now. So you should definitely be running it. And then it's really nice because we always dreamed about the fetish army damage. Uh, fetish, increased fetish army damage would apply to everything, which it will all to all fetishes, which it does now. So like now, the carnival offhand is simply a monster because we can get the fetish damage up so high. So, just roll into the dungeon, and I'll see this elite set up. And the nice thing is, you could stay pretty far back. The fetishes run up and attack, and they block. And look at that, you could just sit back with the five fetishes shooting the guards. Sometimes they bug out. If they do that like that, and they start peering back, I'll move up a little bit. Um, and then, you know, just be a little bit careful, but you can see the damage is just phenomenal and how fast everything dies. Even a little bit of elite damage goes a long way. Now, if you like to run a furnace, I've seen people run furnace. I think furnace would be fun. He loves the big bad voodoo, but I would highly recommend that big bad voodoo because the damage increase and also the attack speed bonus that goes over to pets now is just the damage that goes into them. I would just say use big bad voodoo, but if you want to use furnace, the trade-off is you would just do more damage versus the Rift Guardian. Who knows? Maybe a setup down the road would favor using that over uh, you know anything else because the furnace just does a lot of damage or you know maybe somebody will figure something out but I, I would still run the SMK uh, not too much to see here I know I said that like 50 times but like I said I'm trying to keep this video short and straight to the point so you guys can see what's going on uh, but like I said it's like this required a little bit of fishing and like I said I got some good mobs and I was able to stay from a far distance as you see I'm starting to gain and I think at this point um, after I mow down this mob, I end up getting a conduit in front, and I'm actually able to do a little bit of work, and I could speed a little bit forward because we have the esoteric, which reduces the damage uh, from everything except non-physical, which actually helps out a lot, so we can run through the next mob. We don't have to worry too much. We've got a little bit of tankiness, and we also have pretty solid gear as well. So I got a little lucky on the on the uh, you know conduit trying to moving through still trying to shoot darts and I'm just trying to get as many mobs so we had a good mob density here real easy monsters nothing too crazy and as you can see we gained a lot on that and I think I end up actually even be able to put in a little bit of work on this uh, uh, this uh, dog I don't have to worry too much about skipping the uh, uh, the reflect monster I don't know if they reduce that damage but based on the toughness that we have in combination with the gear that we have it's not that bad at all so as you can see we're getting what we need done, we're doing the damage that we do, and we knocked that monster off and we just got really far ahead. So that's a little bit of fishing and good RNG that I talk about. And then in the next room, we just basically move up a little bit. Um, really not much. There's a lot of mobs in this next room and this is a nice thing with the carnival because you can see how far back I sit. The five closest fetishes next to me will shoot darts, which is perfectly fine. And sometimes you not need to move up. If you get into some good positioning like I did with this double elite, just sit back and just shoot the darts. Let them get stunned and don't risk your life. And just use your, uh, your grasp of the dead and your pranas of Perinato to keep them at bay. And as you can see, everything else is pretty straightforward here. We're going to go ahead and skip up to the boss. And that's going to lead us into the boss. And we're about to get summoned. And I was hoping, like, I'm like, please don't want to get a bad one. And then I looked and I'm like, oh my goodness, we got cold snap. But we do pretty okay. I don't know if they changed anything in his routine. I don't know if they changed how he is. I don't know if they changed his AI, but he wasn't charging me as much. And then as you saw, I just took that frost damage and I didn't have to worry because I got the esoteric on because that will help mitigate the damage. And then when I go to half health, 
you know, it goes up really high. And with the new spirit walk, spirit vessel cooldown only being 60 seconds, if I do die, I only have to make it alive for 60 seconds and do okay. Now, I'm sorry about the little bit of blockage right here where you can't see him, but I'm basically shooting him off screen. And the fetishes are doing physical melee damage on top of the fact that I got the fetishes shooting the darts. Try to stay in big bad voodoo. And he actually burns down pretty quick. As you can see, the Rift Guardian is not a problem. We can get them down very quickly. Now, if I actually decided to opt to use the Furnace, that actually would, he would be pretty much long gone dead by now, I think. But uh, as you can see, the damage is fantastic. The fetishes are meleeing the target. We're still doing, we've got the five fetishes doing the dart damage, and we're stunning them every so often. And remember, you can't keep stunning them over and over like it did before. But as you can see, everything works out pretty well. I'm just trying to get the damage in and finish them off. And, you know, just trying to spirit walk. I don't know why spirit walks are early, but I was trying to dodge everything. And then I think I took a hit right there. That reduced, put me back up to 50% health, and that popped my spirit vessel. But that's okay. As you can see, we cleared him. We had an okay amount of time. A little bit of fishing. Um, clocked in at rank 40, only at Paragon level, uh, what, 782. Didn't have the most optimal or the best gear in the game. Uh, but that just goes to show you how good the new carnival is because they changed the area, uh, area effect or area damage or whatever. Uh, for the witch doctors, the uh, area damage for pets, and then also making it so that fetish army damage applies to everything. That made a dramatic difference. So, uh, this video is clocking in just in at, uh, let me see here, 20 minutes. I better get out of here. I don't want to keep you guys too long, but Carnival is fine. Carnival is great. I still got to test Helltooth and the Cryer set because they got busts, but for right now, it, I think Carnival is going to definitely be the number one build for next season, but we'll have to wait and see after I get up the videos for the hell too. So hope you guys like the video. Hope this kept you guys in the loop and this alleviates some people who are worried about uh, the Carnival because I know I was definitely worried about myself. So you got nothing to worry about. Carnival's great. Run that shit with area damage and fetish army damage and you'll have a good time. I'm Debo and I'm out.